So I consider it a great honor and privilege to have a chance to introduce to our great group here in San Francisco, the Surgeon General of the Navy. If you reach a forward resuscitative surgical station alive, alive because of the treatment that the corpsman or the medic provided you en route at the battle scene using advanced techniques, tourniquet therapy, quick clotting therapy, therapy that will save your or my life on the freeway on 80. Five years from now, if you or I are involved in a horrendous accident, or two years from now, in a horrendous accident, and we're hemorrhaging and we're bleeding, the changes we've learned and developed on the battlefield have been imported and will be imported here, and UCSF or Kaiser or any other trauma center will save your life because of what we've learned on the battlefield. So we take you to the Ford Sustainable Surgery if you, Station. If you arrive alive, you have a 98.5% chance of remaining alive. That's unheard of. That isn't just a slight incremental change over World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam. That is an echelon of change. You have nearly a 99% chance of, a, of staying alive and returning to the States alive if you arrive alive at one of these four resuscitative stations. And much of that is not due, give the surgeons their credit. They do some amazing battlefield surgery, but that is due to our young corpsmen. That is due to our Marines taking care of each other. That is due to the advanced techniques we've learned in the, in the platinum 15 minutes, in the golden hour of care. That's the difference it's made. Here's the other difference. Next slide, please. Remember, these same people who are working, this happens to be an operating room of a hospital ship, but these same doctors who are working there, six months from now, will come back from there. They'll be working in our hospitals. They'll be doing the routine surgery. They'll be doing colorectal surgery, gallbladders, hernia repairs, those sorts of things. So my job is to keep their skills proficient. My job is to keep them mentally refreshed. My job is to keep them leaning forward so that when the bell rings, they can be ready to answer the call. My challenge right now, ladies and gentlemen, is not to keep a reservoir of knowledge of combat casualty care and trauma. It's as good as it's ever been in the history of our country. Our military trauma and combat casualty nurses and medics and dentists and doctors and corpsmen is as good as it's ever been. My challenge is going to be to maintain that so we don't lose that capability. We don't lose that reservoir of knowledge as the war ebbs. For those of you who follow Army or Navy medicine, there used to be the National Naval Medical Center at Bethesda, a Navy hospital, took care of the president, still does, run by the Navy. And there used to be Walter Reed, that other hospital. And now, under my tenure, we merged them. We're now one big hospital. We all, they all moved over to Bethesda. It's the United States Army, the greatest army in the world. It's paid with tremendous blood and treasure. And they are an amazing army. An army that's occupied Valley Forge, Seoul, Tokyo, Berlin, Da Nang, now occupies Bethesda, Maryland, <laughs> at the National Naval Medical Hospital. And so we're learning to bring the synergy. But this young Marine will be rehabilitated. Another change from the time of Secretary Schultz. If you were badly injured, grievously injured, in World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam, the average time you were medevac back to the States, from the time you got on a transport ship or an aircraft to take you back to the States, was 45 to 60 days. You stayed in theater from anywhere between a month and a half to two months before you got back home. That gave your family a month and a half to two months on average to adjust and prepare themselves for your injuries. The average time right now, if a young man is in the, or young woman is in the Helmand province right now as we speak in Afghanistan and gets blown up and loses two legs, they'll be back in my ICU in Bethesda in three days. The family will have just probably two days, to reconcile themselves to the injury. We will immediately fly that family back to Bethesda. Sometimes we'll fly the family to Lonsdale, Germany, the next day. The family will show up with no suitcase, no clothes, no nothing. We'll just wire them, we'll arrange their transportation, we'll get them there. Because we have learned the most healing factor for a young person who has been physically and catastrophically injured is loved ones next to them. 
It is the best chicken soup in the world. And when they don't have a family, and as you know, many people who enter the military don't because sometimes they're running away from their family. And when they don't have a family or they have a dysfunctional family, we become their family. You become their family. We are their family. As I tell my young corpsman, you can't always be the cure. You can't always be the savior. But you can be there. You can be there. And nobody exemplifies that more than the United States Marine, more than the United States Sailor, more than the soldier, more than the airman. So he'll go on to rehab. You look at that picture, what's the first thing you see? A family walking out of a hospital. You take a little closer look, and what do you see? Dad's got one leg missing, one arm missing. But outside of that, that little girl doesn't know any different. All she knows is daddy's back and swinging her as they walk out of the hospital. Traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. And this is where you as a civic community, this is where you as an organization of caregivers, marquee organizations like the UC system, like the Kaiser system, like the private system, need to get very interested. I can't make that same promise to the family whose soldier or marine or sailor has come back with moderate to severe TBI or post-traumatic stress. Because I can't guarantee in eight months or nine months that they'll be back on top of their game, ready to laugh and enjoy Disney World or Disneyland or the beach. It is our most vexing challenge. And you've heard the president. We have somewhere between 30 and 40,000 folks coming home this, over the next year. You put on top of that the planned, sequest not sequestration, but the planned drawdown of 80,000 soldiers over the next five to 10 years and 20,000 Marines over the next five to 10 years. And you have a tsunami of people coming back to reintegrate in society who are gonna need our help, need our support. Not all of them will, but out of the two million members of the armed forces over the last 11 years who have rotated through Iraq and Afghanistan. Hundreds of thousands will be affected. And how will they not be a drain on the civic and the social organizations unless we take care of them, unless we make a difference, unless we lean in together? We can't do it alone in the Department of Defense. We can't do it alone in the VA. The VA is doing everything they can to handle this. This is going to be a collaborative effort between the private sector, the academic sector, the VA, and the DOD. The motto of the United States Navy, not Navy medicine, the United States Navy is a global force for good. We want to build. We want to make better. We want to be like the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts who are taught when you go to a campsite, leave it looking better when you leave it than when you got there. We want the world to be a better place when we leave it than when we got there. Here we are in the Amazon where you can see a bunch of sailors sitting in a boat. Obviously, we're not positioned correctly. We're taking water in over the stern. <laughs> this was on a recent trip. I was uh, with the group. We were in the Amazon, sailing down the Amazon stopping house by house, village by village, checking people for malaria, for dengue, for encephalitis. Hospital ship the comfort. We have the sister one down here in San Diego, the Mercy. They're amazing platforms of engagement. They're amazing platforms of peace. So you're a country like Haiti. You have low infrastructure to begin with. Or let's back up the tape even, Indonesia. You're Indonesia, and you're the most populated Muslim country in the world, and you're predominantly anti-American. Why are you anti-American? Because you've heard so many bad things about the Americans. You've been told so many lies. You don't know any better, so you think the Americans are bad people. And you have a tsunami. You have a tsunami that basically just erases a third of your country. And so we send the Lincoln Battle Group, and we send the Mercy over to Indonesia, and without firing a shot, we reverse the sentiment in that country. And all of a sudden, that country which hated us now likes us and is willing to learn a little more about us. That's global engagement. So this is your team. These are your folks. 
This is the America's Away team. This is what we do. This is what we're honored and proud to do. We just want to make a difference. We want to make you proud of your Navy and your Marine Corps. We want every Marine to continue to feel they will not take a hill with outside of their corpsmen. We want our corpsmen to remain the most valid, valored and decorated rating in the Navy. And we have walked the walk. As I said today, of all the Navy forces deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq over the last 11 years, over 50% of all Navy, all rates, all ranks, all types, over 50% of those wounded in action have been from Navy medicine. What will be the impact of sequestration on Navy medicine? The bottom line is no son or daughter who's deployed or forward deployed or at the field of combat will be affected by this. But it may affect my ability to provide elective care in my hospitals. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I sleep well at night because I know of the young men and women, many of whom you have raised or who have taken their advocacy and, and their ethos from you. Uh, we're going to be OK. And uh, we've got some budgetary issues. We've got uh, some political issues. We've got some global issues that we can't escape from in a globalized uh, world and a globalized economy. But at the end of the day, we're going to be OK, because the young people kind of up today, they got the watch. They won't let us fail. General Maya, thank you, sir, for the opportunity to speak to this crowd. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Secretary Schultz, for sponsoring this. Big hand now, Admiral Nathan.